A little bit of reflection on the year that was, I thought that we could run through my best and worst style purchases for 2023 and I thought this would be a little bit of fun. I could talk through the reasoning why for each of the items and I've got kind of eight best and eight worst purchases so I'm going to quickly zip through them all. I usually do a most worn for the whole year but I know there's typically a lot of duplication in those videos with my most worn seasonal roundups so if you're curious about which pieces I've reached for on repeat this year I would recommend just going back through my playlist and watching those instead. So let's dive in we'll alternate between best and worst purchases and I want to start off with a fairly recent edition, but I already know it's going to be one of my most worn pieces of autumn winter in 2024. It is these wool trousers from Facade Pattern. Now these were one of my Black Friday purchases and Facade Pattern has very fast become one of my favorite brands. It's a Korean brand and everything that they design is utterly chic. And I love that their trousers have a little bit of a point of difference. These are called their timeless pants and they're a single pleat front hand and I find them really elongating. On me they just graze the floor so they're kind of the perfect height on 172 centimeters for reference and I do have a longer torso and shorter legs for my height. The quality of these is exceptional. They're 100% wool, they feel really nice and silky and they have a beautiful drape. I've been looking for a replacement for a different pair of grey trousers because I knew what a workhorse they were in my winter wardrobe so absolutely beyond thrilled with these. I did get them in the size small and I would say that they fit true to size so you could technically go down a size depending on your waist measurement. The measurements they have on the website are very accurate and that's how I tend to kind of make my purchases whenever I'm shopping on W Concept for anyone curious but I really couldn't be more happy with these. I also got the cotton round pants in the full length and those are great too but if I had to pick out of the two these grey ones. So special. The facade pattern pants weren't the only grey trousers that I added to cart this year. I also bought the Harley trousers from Dish and I really love these in theory. However, there's a couple of little minor things that make them a little bit of a no-go for me. So the things I love, the high rise. I think that the tailoring on them is really nice and I like the kind of gutsy fabrication that they've used. It is a blend so it's not 100% wool like the facade pattern ones. It doesn't feel quite as elegant although the price tag is very different. The thing that I find really hard with these is one, they've got two pleats so I find that adds a little bit of extra width around your waist and I prefer a single pleat so I should have just known that off the bat but the other thing is just how much fabric there is through the leg and I don't know if it's really kind of coming off well here on camera but you'll be able to see from the cutaways these are incredibly long and this has kind of been my experience in general with a lot of dish trousers I'm not opposed to getting things tailored however the fact that they've got the double pleats they're really wide through the legs so there's just a lot of fabric and then having to get them taken up it's just kind of made them feel a little bit too fussy for me and I prefer the slightly more slimmer but still relaxed silhouette of the facade pattern one. So they're definitely my pick out of the two. If you are really, really tall, you have super long legs and you love a super wide trouser, then I think you'll like these, but I often find just even the puddle of them, it's a, it's a lot of fabric and you kind of have to stand a certain way for them to look really chic. It sort of comes off looking like a maxi skirt, I think sometimes. Next best purchase is a really practical one for me. It is this beautiful uh, pivot dress from Cezanne. This is in a black cotton stretch and I will say I've washed this multiple times. I generally have to throw it in the wash after I've worn it once because if you've got kids you'll know. But I love the design of this hat. It has the little ruche tie detail here at the waist and then it's also got the fold over cuff at the sleeves has the slit on the side too so you have this little bit of airflow when you're moving. I have this in the size small and I do think if you want it to be a little bit more fitted then I would recommend sizing down. They have this in really fun colours. I love the cream, I love the vibrant red that they did uh, but just such a great wardrobe basic and I love it so much that I also ordered the mini version of this too which has the wrap skirt and that is also brilliant and I'll link that one down below as well along with everything else I've featured but Cannot go wrong and I always feel amazing every time I put this on. Next worst purchase is a shirt that I tried on in a shopping vlog. I'll link it up in the cards actually and down below. And I'm really sad that this is actually one of my worst purchases of the year. It's this beautiful kind of olive khaki green shirt from Oriton and it's in a lovely cotton poplin. I really like the quality of this and I love the fact that you've got the contrast button detail as well because they really pop. You also have the lovely little Oriton uh, embroidered logo here on the waist. 
But the thing that kind of has thrown me off with this is the color. And it's funny because when I was in store and I was trying it on, I was with my friend Helen, who's here on YouTube. I'll link her channel down below. Um, I thought this looked amazing on me. I actually felt really good in it. And I loved the way that it worked with my complexion. But when I ordered it online, I bought it when it was on sale and I had it at home. I kind of tried it on and I liked it, uh, but it didn't feel quite the same way it did in store. And then when I wore it a second time, I just kind of felt like the color didn't work with my personal complexion and coloring. And this is all very curious timing because this was around my friend's birthday and she threw, I think this was actually an amazing gift for everyone, but she kind of threw a color consultation party. So she got a color consultant, so someone who comes in and they help you analyze the best colors for you to wear. And she gave us all a little overview of what she assessed our best colors to be. Obviously a really quick session, not full draping experience. and. This was actually not one of my best colors. I'm planning to do a video on this because my friend whose party it was, she said I should. I did actually do a sub stack on this, which is just for paid subscribers. I will link it down below, however. Uh, and the video I'm gonna do will be a bit more of an abridged version of that, but I'm curious to see how different colors look against my skin tone with more of a tan now that it is summer. Uh, so yeah, for that reason, I've really not reached for it and I've just not felt as good. And it reminded me of the fact that when we are shopping, what they're trying to do is create an experience that makes you feel amazing in the clothing that you're trying on. I think that's part of the reason why I like shopping online because I can try things on in my home and it's a much more objective experience that's not being altered by fancy mirrors or lighting that I'm not used to. So for that reason, I've not really worn this, which is a real shame. <laughs> it's kind of ended up being something I don't love quite so much. Um, another one of my best purchases for the year have been the ribcage jeans from Levi's. And I actually got the black and the white pair last year, but this year I added this sort of acid faded wash kind of Levi's 501 sort of color version and I have this in two leg lengths so the shorter leg length has a slightly different wash to it. These are the best jeans hands down. I find them really comfortable even when I'm with my kids uh, and they're just really quite flattering, really leg lengthening and they do come in a full length version. I said this before but I will link that down below. So there's a cropped version, their regular version which is the 29 inch inseam and then they have the full length version for tall girls. So such a stunning jean, the quality of the denim, everything. Levi's know what they're doing and I kind of feel like you can't go wrong. Okay, moving on to another worst purchase and it kind of pains me that this hasn't turned out to be one of the most worn items in my wardrobe as I was hoping it would be. And it is this beautiful pleated skirt from Tibby. It's in this lovely champagne color. And I mean, you guys will know, I do really love Tibby and I love a lot of their designs. Though having two young kids, I do find some things are a little bit impractical for my daily life. And this has sort of fallen within that category because the fabric, I mean, for one, you don't really want to be taking pleated items to the dry cleaners that frequently because what will happen is over time, the pleats are going to fall out. So I'm mindful that I want to care for this as well as possible, which means I can't wear it when I've got my kids. And the situation is that I'm only working part-time right now because I've got my kids part of the week, which really limits the occasions that I can wear this. Uh, and sometimes I've sort of felt when I put it on that I felt a little bit too feminine and prissy and I really want it to feel quite cool and calm and chill. And probably the best way for me to achieve that is with a long sweatshirt. It's a very specific outfit and it kind of requires me wearing this on colder days and living in such a warm climate as I do, it has just meant this has kind of fallen to the wayside and not been something I've reached for. So the delicate nature of the skirt itself and kind of the overt femininity of a pleated skirt, those two things combined have really meant this has not been something I've worn that often. The quality of it though, absolutely stunning. I love the elasticated waistband, very comfortable to wear, and the placement of the pleats, I think very flattering too, uh, but a little bit of an expensive purchase to not reach for very often. Okay, moving on to accessories, and I mean, you probably will know how much I love a good belt, and I've said this many times, you buy a good quality belt, you only need to buy it once because it's going to last you a really long time. And I don't often really add a new one into my rotation because once you've got a couple, you're sort of set. And when I saw a dark chocolate mocha croc version of my favorite Anderson's belt, I decided to take a bit of a gamble on it. I really wasn't expecting this to be as frequently worn as it has been. However, I really love dark chocolate brown accessories. I think that they add a nice softness to an outfit, especially when paired with black. 
and this has gone on to be the one that I reach for more so than my framed leather version which I absolutely love and that is still going strong though I will say that the uh, gold finish on it has really kind of come off because I've worn it so frequently. Such a great belt I think that the actual width of the belt is good as well especially for wearing it with jeans. I have a Isabel Marant belt which I've realized I'm not really reaching for anymore because it is thinner and I want something that has a little bit more width to it that's going to fill in uh, the gap here through the belt loops but really can't be beat such a brilliant buy and they do loads of different styles too um, i will link some of my favorites from anderson's down in the description box along with some more affordable alternatives too okay so another worst buy and it's not for the reason that you think <laughs> the nylon crossbody bag from uniqlo now i'm not too mad about the fact that this hasn't gone on to be one of the things i've reached for loads because it was fairly inexpensive it was around 20 dollars. the reason why this is kind of gone on to be one of my personal were style purchases is because I've never really gotten the opportunity to wear it. My daughter is obsessed with handbags and she loves shoes and she's kind of taken this as her own. So I guess in that respect it's been a brilliant purchase because she loves to throw this on across her body that's why it's so short right now and throw her little toys in there, zip it up, open it up, like she has a ball playing with this and I just couldn't bring myself to take it off her and kind of take this thing that she's sort of sequestered as her own. So I believe if you have been thinking about buying one of these Uniqlo bags and you are going to wear it all the time and you don't have a child who is going to thief your bag if you leave it within their reach, then this is great. It's so affordable. I think it was $20 and it comes in loads of colors and I think now they've also done a larger style. I mean, Uniqlo kill it when it comes to affordable functional accessories. So yeah, I'm sure you've all seen those really funny TikToks and memes of how much you can fit in these bags. They really are pretty good, but that reason it's just not been something I've ever gotten to really wear. <laughs> Next best purchase is another Cezanne item and it is the Nayel skirt. So this is the midi length skirt. This is actually part of a whole style story. I also have the mini skirt version which I really love too. That's the Nayel skirt and then there is a cardigan and then I also have actually the matching jumper that goes with. This is a cotton merino blend and I will always say this about Cezanne. My favorite pieces from them are always when it comes to knitwear styles their natural fiber ones and this is just so beautiful i mean i have had to use my fabric shaver on it because this is just part and parcel of maintenance wear and tear when it comes to our clothing but ended up looking like new after that and comes in a few colors too i have the natural color which is a pink toned beige very pale pink toned beige very very comfortable to wear it has a nice elasticated waistband which isn't too kind of strappy and tight it's quite soft and the silhouette, I think it really graces and falls over the curves so beautifully. And you can machine wash this one too. I just put it in a wool setting. Uh, so very comfortable and not itchy at all. Really lovely and warm and looks great in the winter time with an under the knee boot. I'm going to lump these next two worst purchases together. And again, this is actually another Teddy purchase. And again, one that I'm actually kind of quite sad about. So I coveted this macrame set for so long. I can't even tell you. I obsessively stocked it on the website. I was always keeping track of what sizes were in stock because I had it in my mind to buy the white set. Now, sale time came around and the white was completely sold out in my size. However, the navy was still in stock and I decided to go with it. I actually had to buy the skirt and the top separately, one through the St. Simon's Boutique and then one piece through the website. And I mean, I think it's really cool. It's got kind of a spongy quality to the actual fabrication. And I think this would be a really interesting beach cover up. But the reality is I don't actually go to the beach often enough to warrant wearing something like this. And I think it's just too edgy and too cool for me. <laughs> and I really tried to style it up and figure out how I would wear it for every day. You've probably seen that over on my Instagram. But the reality is I'm just not wearing it. So I am planning to list this one on my Depop for someone else to kind of cherish it, still got the tags attached to it. Uh, but yeah, it was just kind of, I think, a lesson to not buy the color that isn't the one that you want. But also, when I purchased these, they were final sale. So it meant that once I received them, I didn't have a choice to return them if I didn't feel like they were quite me. And the difficulty, the challenge with buying Tibby is that there aren't really any local boutiques that stock them. So often I'll see something and sometimes you just actually have to try the clothes on to know whether or not it's going to work for you. And so my lesson is to really be very sure if I'm going to be buying something that's final sale from Tibby because I've had a few fails 
that way, like things that are beautiful but just not for me, and that's totally fine, but uh, it can be a very expensive mistake to make. Next best purchase of the year, my Onitsuka Tiger Mexico 66 sneakers. These are amazing, and I shared over on TikTok at the start of the year how it was sort of an unpopular opinion, but these are way more comfortable than the Adidas Sambas, and honestly, I prefer them. When I bought both pairs of sneakers, I was really just on the hunt for a slimline sneaker shoe, because I find the chunkier styles, while they look great with certain pairs of trousers, skirts, and jeans, for me, I find that a slim sneaker is a lot more versatile in terms of styling. I've actually bought these in two colors, and I originally ordered the white with the red and blue uh, design on the side, the um, contrast, but I really wanted a metallic, and so I ended up ordering the silver ones too, and I prefer the silver because they're a little bit more subdued, a little bit more subtle, but then you kind of have this cute little metallic edge, and for me it's a great way to add that metallic silver trend into my wardrobe in a natural way. I've worn these loads, they're so 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 comfortable. I'm in European 40 and I wear these in a men's US 8. That is the same size I wear in the Adidas Sambas and I find both fit true to size. If I were the Sambas, I bought mine from Farfetch and they do UK men's sizing so I'm a 7.5 in the Sambas. Just hopefully that helps. I'll have all my sizing info in the uh, description box but Great sneakers. If you've been thinking about buying them, I don't think you would regret it. This is kind of painful for me. These are from the row and they're absolutely stunning. Hang on, I'll pull them out of the box. Okay, so these are called the Margot Heeled Loafers and I love these shoes. They're actually really quite comfortable despite the fact that I've got wider feet. I love the squared off toe detail, the fact that they're very bare across the vamp because a lot of loafers tend to have either an embellishment or a stitch design on the vamp. So I quite like that minimal clean aesthetic and they do have a very reasonable walkable block heel. The reality is that I just don't reach for these. They feel often a little bit too formal, a little bit too, um, a little bit too buttoned up for my everyday. And for that reason, even when I'm working, I will favor a different shoe over these. And it's a shame because they are such a beautiful shoe and the quality of them is really lovely. And it's sort of something I've come to expect with the few things that I own from the row. Um, but I just, can't really see these having a really solid place in my wardrobe and it's a shame because I thought they were going to be something I would wear lots but alas it was not meant to be so I think again another thing that will probably end up going on my depot as I do a little bit of a new year's refresh. Another best purchase on this one is a cheap and cheerful so I actually have it in two colors which I think is always a good sign that you really really love something it is these bustier rib knit tops from H&M. I originally got the cream one first and then I ordered the black one afterwards because I loved it so much and it was on sale from the Black Friday sales. These are really comfortable, they wash well, I find they fit a little bit on the larger side so I sized down to an extra small. I'm not very busty though but perfect fit on me. They are a shorter length so you don't have too much fabric to tuck into your trousers or into your jeans which is great because being a thicker fabric, you don't want to have too much that you're sort of trying to squeeze in there around your waistband. But I mean, I really, I just don't think you can go wrong with these. I mean, I probably don't have to tell you what designer brand these are inspired by. And to get them for under $50, I think such a steal. So that is my next best purchase. I thought I had more worst purchases, but I think I've run through them all. So, okay, I've just got one more best purchase for the year, which is going to be absolutely no surprise when you see them. The About Ariane Ballerina Pumps in the Taupe. Now, I already own these in the black, and they're one of my all-time favorite pairs of shoes, and you can buy them directly from About Ariane's website, and I really adore their shoes. I think they've got some very unique styles and what I like about these is they have the slightly pointed toe but it's squared off at the end. I just think it's very very chic. Nice little detail and you have that bit of extra height. I bought mine off Ukes and they do have them in a few colors like they had a really vibrant pink at one point but the sizes are always really limited so it's just worth having a little look on there. Ukes is part of the Net-a-Porter group so if you aren't familiar with them hopefully that kind of gives you a little bit of assurance. I actually shot from them years and years ago like 15 years ago back in New Zealand but yeah I mean 
I can't go wrong. I mean, these are timeless, they're classic. And when I look at the things that have sort of turned out to be my favorite purchases, my best purchases of the year, it really has been stuff that kind of does lean a little bit more on the classic end of the spectrum. That rounds out my best and worst purchases for 2023. I hope you enjoyed this very kind of chatty video as I ran through the things that I really am glad that I bought and the things I wish maybe I had left at the checkout my basket would love to know what your best and worst purchases were for the year please tell me down in the comments section thank you so so much as well just for your continued support for continuing to sort of tune in and spend some of your day with me I mean I say this all the time but I truly am forever grateful and I'm so glad to have made so many wonderful friends here so thank you so much from the bottom of my heart anyway I will see you again very soon with a new one thank you so much for watching and see you next time bye